Okay, so this is problem number um, 45 from the journal prompt. Um, we have a piecewise differential equation, so we have three different regions that this is defined. And it would really help if I wrote it all out. That would have been much easier. Um, okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to solve this equation in each of the three regions, and then we're going to try to match the value of the function that we get back at the boundary conditions to make it a continuous function. The derivative might not be continuous. It could look something like this, but the function itself should be continuous. At least that's what we're going for, <clears throat> and we want to see if we can make that possible. So we're going to solve it in each region. So our first region 1 is from t uh, going from 0 to 5. So we write down the differential equation in that region and we're going to solve for it in each region. Now this is a standard um, equation, that uh, second order, where we use the uh, initial equation. And so when we solve this we find the roots of it and that becomes the argument in our exponential. Um, if you go back to some of my earlier videos, uh, the number is 26, for example, up to 29. Um, those will give you um, the methodology for what we're going to do here. So solving the initial equation, we can just see by inspection that r equals plus or minus 2i. And there is an implied 0 there. So this is the a value, this is the b value. Just the 2, not the 2i. So um, plugging that in, we say that y of t equals and now we have a e to the a, different a than this, this a right here, which is 0. So e to the 0 is 1, times cosine of 2t, plus b, and then same thing here, e to the 0, which is 1, times sine of 2t. And so we can see that this is just our standard oscillatory solution, which you might have been able to see by here, y double prime equals minus omega squared y, where omega is now in here. Um, okay, so that's our solution. Now we can use the boundary conditions um, because these boundary conditions apply in this region. We don't use them for any other region because it's y at time equals zero and the derivative at time equals zero. And you can see that that falls into this first region. So we're going to use the boundary conditions here and then the boundary conditions that we use later on are equaling the function across the three different regimes. So um, let's do that. y of zero is supposed to equal zero. Um, so that's a times cosine of 1, um, which is just 1, plus b times sine of 0, which is 0. So we, that's really simple. It's a and it equals 0. So that's good to know. We can get rid of that, since a equals 0. And now y prime of 0, as we can see here, is also 0. And so if we take the derivative of this, we don't have to worry about this term anymore because we know that a is 0. The derivative of this is 2b cosine 2t. And when t is 0, that removes all this. Uh, cosine. Um, and so we want... Um, oh, yeah. Yeah, that is correct. <laughs> I, was, I was surprised by that for a minute. Yeah, so cosine 2t is... Um, is uh, equal to 1 at time 0, and this is equal to 0, so we have b equals 0. Now that's allowed, it's just kind of weird. So y of t is 0 initially. I forgot. Um, okay, great. So we solved for it in that region. So if we plot this, this uh, function so far, it's just 0 for this first region. Um, that's all that it is, and both of these constants are 0, and that does <laughs> arbitrarily satisfy this differential equation. Um, second region, we're going to try to equate at time equals five, t equals 5, um, letting the function be 0, whatever it is, to make it continuous. So um, let's solve the function in this region. We have y double prime plus 4y equals t minus 5 all over 5. Um, so now this is one time when we can use the method of undetermined coefficients. I'm just going to distribute that 5, so I get this. <clears throat> Now, this being a polynomial solution, pretend that we also had t cubed plus t squared plus t plus a constant. We can use the method of undetermined coefficients here. So using this half of the equation and this half, um, we're going to assume 
a polynomial solution. Now if you've done this enough, you know that it's probably not going to be a polynomial of higher order than this, um, because there'd be no method of canceling it if it were t squared or something. So we're just going to assume um, that our solution is y equals, let's just call it a times t plus b. Second order polynomial, or a uh, first order, and then the zero order is here. Um, so now we get to uh, plug that in and solve for it. So um, assuming that that's the solution, <clears throat> now let's plug that back into the equation. So y double prime kills both of these terms. y double prime is zero here. y is just this. And so we can see that the only possibility would be plugging in 4at plus 4b, plugging that in for y, and that equals t over 5 minus 1. So equating powers, this is t to the first and this is t to the first, we see that 4a equals 1 fifth, and we also see that 4b equals minus 1. So we can see that each of these is just um, 1 fourth the value over here. That should be obvious because we see the 4 over here that cancels the 1 fourth. So a is 1 20th and b equals minus 1 fourth. So our um, equation in this region is now y equals, this is for region 2, um, t over 20 minus 1 fourth. Now we have to make sure that um, we actually satisfy that boundary condition. So when we plug in t equals 5, the beginning of this region right here, this is t, it better equal 0 because that's what our equation previously equaled if we want to make this continuous. So when we plug in t equals 5, yep, we get 1 fourth minus 1 fourth. So now this is just t over 20 um, minus 1 fourth. So this is just a line that intersects at minus one-fourth back here. So this is continuous, good. Region 3. I'm going to back this up a bit. And a lot of room for this one. Um, so number 3, t is greater than or equal to 10, and so same thing here, y double... Mouth and hands need to match, plus 4y is equal to 1. So we're going to do the um, exact same methodology here with undetermined coefficients. Um, we have just a constant here, so we're going to assume that y equals a. Different a than up here. Just to be clear, we'll make it c. Um, plugging in, it's really obvious. The second derivative um, goes to 0, so 4c equals 1, c is 1 fourth. Okay, um, so that's a relatively straightforward solution. Um, we get y equals, so this is region 3, region 2, and... Region 1. That's our first one, second one, and now this third one equals 1 fourth. Now we have to see if that's continuous. It does satisfy this equation. Now we can't guess a higher um, order polynomial here. Let's say we guess something with t squared. The derivative does knock down the power, but this doesn't. So we're left with an arbitrary t squared, and we would get that that constant is still 0. Um, so y3 equals 1 fourth. Um, and now let's test that at the boundary conditions. When t equals 10, this is still 1 fourth. Back here, when t equals 10, we get 10 twentieths or 1 half minus 1 fourth, which is 1 fourth. So good, we met the boundary conditions again. This is 1 fourth, and down here is 0. So that's our overall function. Um, 0 until time 5, then we get a line described above, and then 1 fourth afterwards. Um, so that's our... Um, piecewise solution to this differential equation. We see that the function's continuous, the derivative is discontinuous at the boundaries, but that's to be expected because the diff EQ is discontinuous at the boundaries. Um, so that's our overall solution for that. You just have to solve it in pieces, use the boundary conditions for the region in which they apply, and then make them continuous across each boundary. All right, uh, my last problem in this, um, in this uh, blog post will be number 48. So if you're wondering for that, for Laplace and inverse Laplace transforms, then you can go to that one.